Hey, how are you today? How do you feel? I think the same like you. <laughs> I feel light. I just rested. I had a good sleep and I feel good. Not so, so much in my head. <laughs> just chill, steady. Wow, <laughs> what a question. <laughs> Okay, I still have to get used to this kind of like okay. setup. <laughs>
of the province at 15 years old. And I didn't know that the world was big. Like, I get overwhelmed with the noise, the smell of the city. I didn't want to go to school. I mean, I had to, that's what everybody said, but there's a part of me that doesn't feel like that's how I'm going to learn. So I told my, when my grandmother died, the one who raised me, I was under the uh, caretaking of my uncle, the father, uh, the brother of my mom. And I was going to school sustained by my mother. For the first time I met my mom, I looked for my dad. It's a long story about the way I have become. I'm like a whole book because I didn't even write it all down, but it's just a memory of me. I have to honor it, recognize it so that I can really start from the question you asked me. <laughs> it's gonna be a long way for you. <laughs> but it's up to you, you know, if you can be patient waiting for that, but just backstory. And then, so when I went, I left the province, it was, I felt like there's an energy that kicked me out of my home because my grandma's gone, no one's gonna take care of me. I'm a little special in where I'm from because I can feel that a lot of people stare at you when you're walking and it doesn't feel like safe for me or comfortable as a kid, like growing, turning into a teenager. So I didn't feel safe to live by myself, even with all the neighborhood where our compound, where our relatives live. I also felt like I, there's a part of me that wants to explore now. And if, if there's nothing to look back, all you have to do is look forward. So upon entering the city, a new space, um, my dreams, I didn't know I had them. Um, suddenly I became a model and then modeling brought me into these scenes where I learned social, socializing. I used to be shy, I can't even speak English. I can hear people, I write English, but um, I was not confident to talk about my feelings. We were taught where I'm from to listen, to observe, and to care about our thoughts and doesn't and don't talk like we don't speak we just listen we just receive as children and for the first time i have to learn how to speak for myself because i feel the blockage from my throat or like i feel that there's i have so many things to say but i don't know how to put them in words modeling i didn't want to become a model but the way i look of course i always attracted agents that wanted me to model and in the first moments I was receiving cards, I even thought they just want to scam me and become a prostitute or something, you know, because I'm very, I also have an instinct of protecting myself from these kind of energies because it's new to me. And I'm very sensitive of that because we live from a place where we know each other and suddenly go out, right? And then at that moment, modeling, um, it opened up the world. Suddenly I found myself uh, walking on a runway cry with the tears in my eyes like I didn't know that the world was waiting for me to I mean there's a world like this waiting for me outside so I just my soul kind of felt this warmth of dreams and I had no attachment to anything I was always just following what the universe was providing for me you know about beginner's luck when you have courage it seems to be that everything just falls into place even if you don't have anything that you have no idea what is happening. You're just being there, feeling things, showing up, uh, being humble and grateful of all this experience, new to and more beautiful, at least in that moment, a uh, lighter feeling for my heart than where I'm from. And then modeling made able, enable me to travel to different parts of the world, like a little bit modeling in Europe, when I first traveled outside my country, it was in Switzerland. Uh, I was buying a gift from the gift card that I received as a gift. And apparently the designer uh, of the place wanted to ask me if I could walk for her show. And then that's when I learned that, wow, I'm, I'm the only Filipino person here in this country at 2011. And I think it's pretty special during the time to meet a Filipina because everyone who was going there were Thai. And I spoke English, so they were wondering, where are you from? Like, it's like, you cannot, you don't sound like Thai. And I said, I'm from Philippines. And then the person, where's that? Like, they didn't even know that it existed. 
but the place was very um, receiving to me. Like they really allowed me to explore gently and to kind of civilize me, to show me how to eat with <laughs> spoon and fork and all this. And clothes doesn't have to be branded. It's about the quality and the uh, ethic that you do with, uh, for example, the friends that I had during the time. Um, I mean, not friends, but they're the siblings of my boyfriend during the time we met in Manila, and he's the reason why I was able to travel. I told him my story, and he wanted to change the way I, I had back then to give me more experience in life. And we were just few uh, years. He's like three years older than me, and I'm like still, you know, learning the world. And then her fam his family was already a little bit more adva advanced than what we are doing now like sustainability wise they think about this stuff um i'm just observing it and they were making fabrics that are their own design using uh fibers you know like it was pretty advanced and the mother is an artist so i kind of like expose also with this kind of energy of art and simplicity even if they well off they're very humble you can see them wearing shirt and and don't care about material things but about the purpose of the things they do. But I didn't see it that way back then, you know, like just reflecting back before now that I have this awareness. And then I became also a beauty, beauty queen. Like I came home from Switzerland and then suddenly I found myself in an interview for a prestigious competition here in the Philippines, which is Binibining Pilipinas, it's a Miss Universe Philippines. So I also became a candidate instantly without training. Like, I didn't know that everyone else trained for a year or years or months just to get in. And I was just coming, you know, like, uh, as a normal person, as a model. I even went, like, the way models would go on a casting while everyone else big hairs and, like, lashes and, you know. But I felt, I didn't know these people, you know. Normally, we would know each other. And then when I got in, I asked my agent, like, what, did I join again? <laughs> and this, like... <laughs> What an idiot. <laughs> like, this is the most prestigious competition here in our country, and you don't even know where, that you're, you already got in. And I was like, I was nervous because I was feeling like, what, is, what would my mom tell me? I was a little bit insecure about the way I am, where I'm from, and now they expect me that I'm somebody because I came from Switzerland and the publicity is higher than who I really am. I didn't feel re uh, honored the way I am, my truth. So there's a part of me that want, they wanted the publicity of being from the Switzerland, coming home instead of knowing my story. So I was not completely whole as I went to the competition and all I wanted to just really finish it because I'm really stubborn as a person. Like um, I get my attention is not long enough to stay with a lot of people from every day, like for three months in one house. Kind of. And being with women also actually taught me how to care about myself, the way we, we, we think, the way on the outside and on the inside of the competitions and all that. I don't want to go deeper with that because it doesn't resonate with the way I am as a person. But for others, if I was more aware, I would have known how to play the way they would, or at least they don't have to play, but to really embody what they're looking for. But it's not for me. I was meant to just pass by the experience to know if I wanted it. And I didn't join again. After that, um, I had uh, I was able to travel more in Denmark and all nice countries. And my my ex boyfriend during that time was a football player playing for Bundesliga from uh, Fortuna Düsseldorf. And then he was playing for Asia because we were together, and it was easier for us to be together if we were like that. But the whole time I was with him, we were surrounded with all people who are really somebody. And I'm just really the only person who felt, I felt like nobody, you know, like um, all I was is just a girl who want to be with a guy and want to cook and and be not, just love him. But I felt like I have to be somebody to be part of this world. And well, of course, when you explore more of this world that's new and I'm not anchored with who I am, I didn't feel that it's my place to be. So there's a part of me that want to connect back to my home because I've been drifted so far away and I feel that I, want, I miss my people. I miss to be myself, that no matter how beautiful things around me, I didn't feel like it was me.
So, I miss myself. But I don't know myself. But I, there's a part of me that want to explore that side of me. Um, so, I didn't really want to leave what I had. I just wanted to be honored the way I am and be with them at the same time. But it's a competition. It's so restless for me to be there. And it's like a, a, a power. It's a, it's a power play. It's, there's a lot of perspectives that I've seen from this person that I am and the places I've been and the things that are happening in my life that I felt like I think there's something wrong here. Like... Like something is internal and is tearing up inside because I'm seeing a perspective that is different from where I'm from. So at the end of the day, uh, there are a lot of uh, other things. Like when I came home to Philippines, I decided to continue my studies just to have some reason to stay you know, home and ground me a purpose because I don't just want to go to places and watch everything again. I just I want to take part in the world. So I want to have a purpose when I am in a place, not just a passenger, you know. So I, I went back to school and during the time, since I have more things, experience outside of country, I go back to my teachers and when they teach me things, I would have also my own opinions on the things they teach me. And I think it's also interesting for the teachers when I'm around because I am really articulate with my my the way I am and how curious I would like to know more about the things they're teaching us. Although I had more other things I was doing more than school, I was also a model and I was working as in a community relations. And uh, yeah, during that time I, I entered the art world. So before I was only surrounded with like champagne, with models, with party, with football, with with formal things, more formal conversations. and. I feel like if I'm gonna be myself, they're gonna think I'm so crazy. Like, so I was always like, just be a little chill and be normal like everyone. But then when I entered into this new space of artistic community, I was I came from work and then it was an event and I got invited into an auction by a friend. And we usually love to dance together. We don't really mind if we didn't see each other so long, but when we see each other, we just dance again and we share that kind of feeling that you're free to dance and close your eyes and just be with yourself and then i got into an auction and upon entering that moment some energy felt like i've never felt before when i entered everybody look at you like all day i had went to you and i was like oh like and then I ran to her and then there was all art on the wall. It was a rustic building um, with like turned into an art gallery. And then everyone's wearing quirky clothes. It's fun. Everyone's jamming. Someone's dancing like me, crazy. Like, and I told myself, like, I, I feel familiar with this world. I like this place. Like, I feel like I can be myself, but everyone seems to be themselves, but they're all together, but different. There's people wearing slippers, there's people wearing fine clothes, there are people wearing just a tank top, and there's a guy doing some capoeira while dancing, and then some dude just drumming and jamming, and then there's someone grabs the guitar and starts playing. And I really like this change that happened overnight with me, and at that night everybody's wanted to get my number because they haven't seen me around before. And I'm home, but I never explored my own country, you know, so... I didn't see the scene, and when they, when they let me, uh, they got my number. Um, then asked me when this guy was doing capoeira, like, hey, do you wanna be my muse for uh, my paintings? And of course, sometimes you think of the worst, right? Like, maybe you just wanna be with me or things like that, because I'm really often mistaken to be naive, but I allow it to be. I mean, that's my energy, but I'm more reflective than the outer part of my 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 personality so i thought about my parents because i didn't grow up with them that's the intention of why i agreed to be his muse because my mother used to be the muse of my father and i wanted to enter the psyche of my mom to know what it's like to be the girl who's the subject of a painting and then that changed my life in a way that i wanted um <laughs> So suddenly I went and then I just went with the flow like all the time, you know. Um, 
And then suddenly I became a muse, like a whole collection. I didn't know that. I thought it was just gonna be one one painting, you know. But then he invited me, shall we paint? And then when I thought I'm gonna paint together because I wanna immerse myself with them, I didn't know I'm the one they're gonna paint on and be the subject of the picture. So there's a collab where I'm just hanging out without any idea that something is gonna come up in the future, that the whole auction, the next auction will be me, the collection. And all the other muse was uh, big, like kind of like big personalities in the Philippines that are uh, gonna carry the crowd, I guess, because I'm just a nobody. So I felt insecure as well to why me? Like why, who's gonna buy them? Like I'm nothing like, so I felt nervous and feel a little bit um, insecure about them that why, maybe it's not gonna be like, I was scared, you know, that I will see myself everywhere. And who's this girl? Like. But then I came with still this feeling of courage and exploration and like just being a, an empty canvas in my heart that whatever happens is part of the experience, you know, it's the closing part of the whole adventure. And suddenly after that night, there was a famous, uh, famous icon also that was the kind of closure of my things that answers my question inside of me. Um, she arrived and everybody loves her because she used to, she's an icon. Rest in peace because she's uh, she passed away already. I'm just sharing it for the sake of my own experience without judgment. So I just want to clear that part um, because she played an important role in that moment that everybody really uh, praised her, you know, like very shy to come up to her or actually at the same time. I feel like they just make her like a mascot of their dreams with an awareness of who, the, who they really are inside. And I'm so sensitive, so I see her face and what she just really wants is to dance, you know, to, to be free. So because I was really free to dance, like I like dancing, and I, we were trying dancing with the African beats, with groovy music, funky, and then da 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 like cleansing, you know? And then I saw her and everybody, she's just sitting down there and everything is kind of like, and she's sitting fine and I resonate with the way I was when I was still out there, you know? And I grabbed her and you know what? I said like, come with me, I said. And then I grabbed her and then take off your shoes, I said. And then we both barefoot in the city, in the dance floor and just going around. And then for the first time, she actually felt this kind of energy to set her free, but that was, also something I wanted to share with everybody. But from that moment, I said, come with me. And then we went and just drive her with me. And the next morning, um, of course, there's always some people get your number to be in another project. But one time I was going to school, that was my exam. And her agent, uh, uh, she messaged me and said like, hey, uh, how are you today? Like, do you want to come join me in a, in a music, uh, in a movie camp, boot camp? because they're making a movie for her, like her idea. And she wanted me to play the role. But I will, I, who's this again? I said, because I forgot, you know, like so many people. <laughs> it's, it's me, like, na na na, the, la the girl, the lady from last night. And then I'm like, hi, like, and I know she's famous, but it was not my time because she's a little bit older than me, like a little bit my, like my mother's kind of versions of the generation when there's no Instagram and only the, real actress are in the movie, you know? It's not easy to enter this uh, industry. And then I was like, wow, and then uh, I turn it down. Like I'm, I'm, I actually have uh, to finish my studies and I'm, we have exam coming, so I would love to join, but I don't think I can do it because I'm also scared of the energy of this new place because I left, you know, I left that world. And now here I am again, again, I get inside of it. So I just wanted to be free. And then also in that moment, um, just showing me, the world was showing me things and I'm, I'm, I don't want anything. I just want to know. That's the whole point. And then I, another big exhibit happened where my, my, photo, my photograph, like contemporary art of my portrait with like Jesus, like, like this way. It's kind of like the, the one on the cross, except I'm a woman. I'm a girl, and then I had no clue about this, but I was praying during the time when it got captured that I was uh, asking for forgiveness that the body moved itself and 
I'm just saying, please, Father, because my religion, I was born Christian, and I was like, Father, please forgive me. Um, I'm not here trying to mimic or disrespect you. I hope you know that. And then I did that, and he captured that exact moment of looking at the sky. And for just for a few moments, that was the piece that was uh, become the big so, uh, iconic yeah, well, he was capturing portrait me, here I, in the Philippines. I didn't know. He said, oh, okay, I got the shot. Like, And that was so quick. And I was like, if you don't have any expectations, you know, like just things happening, I'm just more of an observer at this point because I realize I don't know shit. I don't know anything. And then, so um, I just kept going with that, with the exhibit. And then suddenly they're working on it. He's painting on it and preparing it. I was just busy at school. We hang out too. I think he was also in the most transformative time, the artist. He was on the most transformative time of his life as an artist because he used to be a photographer and then he's turning into an artist. But now he he's doing a lot of, like he's traveling to Italy. Like after those moments, he traveled to Italy for his sole exhibit to Rome, uh, to Italy and to um, just outside of the countries. And then, but the piece uh, that night was very remarkable to me. That was like the last a stretch of my adventure of this world and that world before I turn into the way I am now. Um, if you're nothing, if you, if you're not part of this world and you suddenly enter, become an instant observer, when you thought you're you're being observed, you become the one watching. You know, I when you thought you're being watched, you become the observer, because everyone's coming with something like they all have an intention but i don't i was just really there for the beauty of the experience and i don't even know if i'm selling my soul during that time i was just really uh, going with the experience and then i saw like truth i saw the artist i saw the the uh, everyone's want something from somebody like they go agents with the celebrity, the celebrity to take pictures with you, the, with you wearing the clothes, and the PRs want to meet the prominent people, the prominent people want to bring warmth in their heart because of the energy of the artist. Like, it's like a whole world where everyone's just with each other and I'm the only one who felt like <laughs> watching. Like, I just wanna love. I just want to love. So I left the place because I, the energy was so strong. Like, I'm no, it's just a picture of me here on the wall, but nobody cares about me here. Only the guy that was the first uh, artist who got me as a muse because I felt that he really cared about me. So I went home after, and everyone else still there. And then I was crying. I was like, my dreams crash. All my dreams crash that night because I met all my dreams. I wanted to be all of like them, but now that I've seen the truth, do I really want to? So it's time I said to create my own dream. So in two weeks time, even with all the offers of frame, glory and power in that moment that I knew so everyone else is playing unaware or aware, Probably they gave up on it because they were used to it. I just wanted to just be free and be with people who are more pure and don't want anything. Just want to breathe. So two weeks, I gave up everything. My boyfriend, I broke up with him. I left my family because I was just sending money all the time. And I felt guilty because I'm seeing so many beautiful things, but they're not with me. And I'm eating some good food, but my... Maybe one of my siblings doesn't even eat three times or two times or one time a day. So I cannot swallow it. I cannot eat when I know a part of me is not there. So I always felt guilty and give all the money I had to every people that, I, that come into my life and give away what I have to make me feel good. So I bought a ticket, one-way ticket to Puerto Princesa. There's a, I had a dream, you know, before I did all of that. Something healed me. Like a dream, literally. There was a, there was an old lady, standing by the tree, 
And then she asked me, come here. And then it's a telepathy kind of way, you know, when you dream, you kind of um, understand without the words, but you have, you're speaking to each other. And she's standing in an old tree that are into, intertwined together, but different trees, but old. And then I was going to school with my bag and ready to pass my research paper and I'm ready to go, you know. And then she said, come here. Can you help me? She said. It's like, um, okay, because I was raised by, by older people, you know. Of course, they're my priority. So I put down everything that I have, even if I'm rushing to go to school because I might be late to pass it on. And then I went to her and I said, you know, I'm also good with climbing trees. So I want to show up off to her that it's nothing you know i can climb all the trees and then when i climb i was also curious about what's up there even if she wouldn't tell me what's up there i want to know so i was climbing with all the enthusiasm like i'm still i'm a kid again and then when i was climbing there's a branch that i couldn't do anything i stretch everything that i could with my legs and everything it doesn't work and i was like i got tired and I went down again and said to her, like, Mommy, because I call all people Mommy, not Lola, because my grandma is Mommy. I can't. And then, it's not like disappointment that I was not able to fulfill her, but it's disappointment of myself that they said to me that if you like it and you're going to do your best, you can make it. But that's not true. So I step out of the tree and looking back at it, like, I really want to go up there, but I can't. So hard. So suddenly, one of the tree bent down, and then it asked me to ride. And I put myself in there like a monkey, and then hug it, like a kid. And then it slowly go, went up, and then dropped me so gentle, like I've never felt before. And I saw all the kids playing, like a school, but nature. They're smelling things, they're touching leaves, they're running, they're, but they're in a school. And I was like, wow, so this is what's up here. And then after that, there's a bell that rang, which is a symbol of it's time to go home. Like when we were kids where I'm studying, we always had this thing, bell, you know, that goes home with everybody. And then... All the kids was going to go down to where I came from, where I was trying to climb the tree. But I said, wait, you don't have to go there. You can climb, you can ride with me. And then I went to, to ride with the, the, word, the one that took me to put there, to go down. So all the kids did the same thing as I was doing. And then slowly, while it's dropping you, right? In your dream, you're supposed to wake up because it's falling. But it's like this one is like really gently like falling, like putting you down on the floor. Ah, wait. When I was like that, it went so high that I thought, wait, wait, wait. I said, my grips are not strong enough. I'm afraid. And then it hugged me. Like I've never felt my body healed at all in my whole existence. That in my waking life, I felt that it hugged me. I, I, something new happened to my body after that hug from the tree. So that's when I saw the kids, and then when I did that, while it's going down, I saw my family witnessing the magic that's happening. And for the first time in my life, I'm so proud that they're seeing it, that I proved them. Like, you see, like, magic is real, like that. And then I hugged the tree and then went down and I woke up and there's the word in my head that I don't know how it came from. It said, that's all we need. It's love. And I woke up knew and that dream i made it to reality in two weeks time i gave up everything that i am and then just gamble the future you know start from scratch again don't ha you don't have anything my clothes i don't want to wear them anymore my laptop i gave them away my camera oh, take all the things i am right now i want to be new i want everything to start from nothing i want to be mindful now about everything that i'm going to put in me so I booked a one-way ticket to Puerto Princesa and I told myself the first van that will take me will be the place to be and I'm going to be a teacher. I wrote my dean, my dean, I didn't finish my studies even if I only had one left because the fire is there already. I cannot wait. 
this is my moment. I want to make this happen. So I wrote my dean, is there a way I can study in my own way and report to you? Because I know there's a way for me to learn. But if you allow me to take my studies in a different way, then I would like to finish it that way. But they didn't because it's a, it's a system, you know. You don't change it like that. But you can prove them, you know. But this is like for later. And then I bought some art. Uh, art in, I just bought typewriter. Um, I don't have any phone anymore. I gave up using that for a moment just to know what it's really meant for me to to do, to use it. I like in, when I was shifting, like going to Port Barton and gave up everything, I also started to create awareness with everything that I'm going to bring with me. So I spent all my uh, money, not that I have a lot, but like because I always gave it away every time I receive it. I didn't feel like it belongs to me. It's always belong to everybody. So that's how I am, like a channel for other people to, you know. And then I went to Port Barton. All I had was typewriter. The van, actually, I paid with poetry. I was trying to, to knock on humanity, to not depend on money. I want to know if there's a way to live without depending on it. I want to know if it's possible. So before that, of course, there's a preparation of changing my, my diet because I, during the time that was when all the vegan people are starting to introduce this lifestyle. But I'm not vegan. I was more of like changing the things I was eating to be mind to know for the first time what I'm eating, to read, to to understand what they are when before I put them like an agreement, you know. So I, I wanted to also test myself if I will survive by just eating if I can be sustained by this nutrition of just eating plants, if they're... I was more into that time. Like, I don't care if I'm going to get sick or whatever. I'm ready to explore it. Like, to understand where they're coming from, you know? Not to be one, but just to... First, of course, one month. You don't have to... Okay, one week first, I did that. If I was able to do it one week, then continue one month. And then in the end, like, for three months, I want to give myself... a. Uh, uh, reward to eat meat with my family on Christmas because it's a traditional thing with us to eat together. But if I come home for Christmas and I will start telling my fa family, my people, that I'm vegan, they're probably going to slap me and, you know, like, what are you talking about? Like, it's like us. So it's a different way of living. We we take care of our own, uh, you know, our own animals. We forage our food from our backyard. All you have to learn is how to cook them. And our parents teach us early to cook. So I changed my diet, I also changed my clothes, I also changed my idea of the world that I want to see the world in a more ancient way, like uh, without the phone. So you can have an access to that. Like in school, I was always going to the libraries instead to read instead of the laptop because I already gave up all the technologies. I want to observe the world without it. I want to know what I'm going to do without it. If there's a way to live with other people without it. And I saw so many things uh, when I changed that. Like when people sit in a restaurant and they're together and I'm just sitting with a book or a pen and paper. I always brought it with me. And a part of me is, of course, a lot of contemplation around my surrounding. And I see everyone so busy in this world. Like something is happening that they don't know they're not aware. But there's also another world that exists the whole time. But it's also not aware that you ha we have that chance to also connect with that but it's a lot of spaces but we are not aware of their um, availabilities like that they're there the whole time so I see person the part someone's going to the toilet and since he's alone she's alone she would start autopilot check in her bag and 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 put like never never had a chance to be with ourselves we always you know try to we don't want to just do nothing we want to do something but we don't we're not aware that we didn't have a time to pause, to just sit first and explore the silence. And then you can do anything, you know? It's like an instinct that we are not putting awareness of grabbing the phone. And, and, and. But I saw that because of the experiment, like not using the phone and only going back to social media every uh, 30th of the month and all day without guilt, I'm going to just read everything. But I didn't do it because I wanna, don't want to change the way I think in that moment. And I wanted to just post all the things that I experienced per picture, one picture, so I'm really present. 
Moi, I took one picture of every feeling that I thought was a milestone for me and shared all what I felt. Like, first picture is this, second picture is this, third picture is this. And then out. And then continue again offline. So, when con coming back to the time when I took the plane to Port Barton with typewriter, with or alt materials, and just few clothes with me that I chose, I was ready. My body, I can eat wherever there's plants growing because I prepared myself to eat vegetables, you know? It's like, it's like a preparation. And then I arrived and I didn't know it was such a beautiful paradise where I'm arriving to. I expected the worst, you know, like a farm, village, and all like just houses that... I wanted to learn tribal way, like learn their music, their medicine. That was the idea. The original intention was to, to pass it to me before it's erased. I want to get it. I want to keep it. I want to give it away when it's needed. That's the whole intention of me going back there, like to that feeling of connecting to the wisdom of those people carrying all of this because nobody wants it, but I want it. So I went there and then, uh, wow, beautiful place, Port Barton. During the times not yet getting famous, I wanted to have my own new place where nobody's going and I'm the first one to see it and be with the community. And then I ended up there and then I went to this reggae bar and then just said, can I, can I use this place as a school in daytime or when you're not using it in exchange, I'm going to be a waiter. The, the transition, you know, like from that, then suddenly I'm going to be a waiter. I'm going to be a teacher. And I don't know if I'm going to be students yet, but I'm going to look for them. But I told them like, um, can I use this space in daytime when you're not open yet? And then I can uh, serve in the night like as a waiter or help with anything. I could wash dishes or whatever, but I just need your space. And if I could put my hammock here and just sleep here. And then they were all like wondering like, no way you're gonna do that, you know? Like, and then what's your name? They said like, I changed my name instantly. Like I didn't think of it. I just said, Agos. And then I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> and then I'm like, every time they call me after that saying that, I look, it's like I already knew it, that that's a name that I'm connected to, but I don't know where it come from. Like Agos in English is flow. It's a reminder. My name is a reminder. And then, so I thought, I've been reading books. This time I wanna write my own book. I'm gonna write my own story. I'm so tired reading people's stories. I wanna write mine now. All these voices of people sharing themselves, the idea why they're writing i kind of felt like i stitched them together like all the writings whether it's english or in historically whatever writing everyone's just talking about a fragment of a big thing bigger thing but it's just fragments that nobody can understand why or how come that they're explaining it it's like they're trying to send you a message but they don't know the big picture it's just a puzzle of each of us and you can be timeless with it. You can travel in their world as they write. Because if you write and you read the book, you're going to feel like you're the one writing it. And you're there with him. And how did you come up with this? You start to feel like a, that person, you're writing it yourself while you're reading it. So you can travel with him in that world, in that time. So I felt, okay, if that person is speaking this kind of language, even from another, time, another uh, time in the world, I... I Feel like I'm connected to it and so when I went there um, the omens in my dream I was passing by and looking for coconuts to eat because I wanted every food for free you know I don't have money so I need to figure it out I might not maybe I won't die you know because there are people out there they're still humans if I will tell them I'm hungry they will feed me so I said to them like hey can I ask for your coconut you have a lot anyways. <laughs> then what are you going to do with it? It's my lunch. <laughs> and then the old lady that was next to a tree in a house, she's alone. And I, I said, Mommy, you have a lot of mangoes there. Can I get some? It's like, what are you going to do with that? It's like, it's my lunch. It's like, she asked me, can you come here and cook for yourself? Like, you're so skinny. You need to eat. It's like, that sounds like a blessing. So even though I am plant-based during the time because I felt good with the offer, 
I went in and while I was cooking, preparing my food from the vegetables she had around her kitchen, she told me all the stories that she's probably never spoken for a very long time, that I see her eyes shine and telling the, how did you get here? Are you from here? Like question, asking questions, you know, curiosity, she's telling me my back hurts and all these, and I came here with alone and I was not from here. You know, when you start to bring that memories of these people who's never talked about it for a very long time there's somehow radiates in their eyes that make me feel like i'm feeling the same feelings that this person has and while i'm cooking and we ate after that i gave her what i had in my pocket like a gift from a friend from bali who gave me an essential oil and i said like mommy um this is my gift for you i will give you massage in exchange for the food and then she sat and I'm just massaging her leg like that before I left. And then after that, because I remember everything, after that I was passing by this abandoned house. And then I saw it like, wait, this has a lot of potential. I can turn it into school, no one's using it anyways. But it's a kubo, like kubo is like made of wood and like nobody's staying there, maybe some other people stay there but not from there and they found it and i asked who's the owner of this house i said from the neighbor the other neighbor next to mommy's house the old lady i was like they're from there directed me to a house and i asked them like daddy is an old man yeah is your house there like are you selling it or like using it while it nobody's bought it can i clean it i want to turn it into school <laughs> And then I was like, he said, like, no one has ever asked me that, like, but it's been empty and it's not used. So go for it. Like, go use it. Yeah, daddy, you can just kick me out when somebody wants it. It's up to you. Then the next day I, I slept at the house. And then the next day I was ready to sleep under the skies by the boat. You know, people pay for that to go on a camping. Why can't you just do it for free if it's already available? So I thought... I don't mind sleeping under the sky, you know, in the night and then go there again. But there, it's kind of dangerous for a girl like me. So I still try to be closer to the people and sleep the same way, you know. I wanted to be one with them. I want to know what it's like to be that yeah, I'm not entitled to be somebody that I'm not privileged. That I don't see myself better than anyone who's living there. Actually, they're better than me in that sense because they know. And I am out here with all the illusions of carrying all this that I am, that I think I am, but I'm still releasing, flashing all of these toxins in my body and dreaming. So when I saw, when they let me use it, I just started cleaning it the next morning and then remove all the dirt and all the things that was left there. And suddenly there's this boy watching me, like I'm crazy, you know? It's like, like that, and it's like, and then suddenly he disappeared. And then when he came back, he already has hammer and broom and all the other kids. He brought a lot of kids. And I'm like, they started cleaning it with me. I didn't have any conversation. And I was like, wait, don't do that. Like, no, 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 you're gonna hurt yourself. Like, but they're better than me. Like they know how to build a house, like at the age. So I realized that they are a tribal children from the island, the side where they're all families and they're all tribes. And then they turned to be my students. So for the seven years, uh, seven months of living there, I was with them every day of my life, like teaching them art, showing them the world, making music, uh, you know, bringing the local musicians or foreign to teach them for an hour at least in that house. And I don't know music. I'm not a teacher. I just have the passion to do it. I don't need paper to validate me that I can teach. I know that my grandma taught me many things too. I can teach them like how my grandma taught me. So I shared what I know and I wanted them to to just I just want to surround myself with them because it was easier for me to be with kids and with old people after all the things happened to me. And then every day, you know, like you see these children and you create an impact in their eyes and you see them, how much they look up to you. And it makes me feel like I'm so supported, like I'm proud. I'm proud of me because they're looking at me with those eyes and I'm like, 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 I don't know what that looked like, but for me, allowing them, making them feel safe to explore their own place, even with all the people, new people coming in and out, but they feel like they're not part of it. I was there. I wanted to be like them. I wanted them to know how it feels to be 
you know, when one by one falling in line, and then we are studying by the beach, you know, give them that kind of feeling the other people are having, creating that space for them, uh, making them feel special, recognizing their existence, knowing they're the holders of this space because they're the purest people who are here on that, on that land. Um, bringing them to the ocean, giving my passport or whatever to make their, their parents feel safe that their kids are with me. And then one by one, I let them fall in line. And then one by one, I bring them to the water and lay down and, and do like, a, you know, just put there and they feel safe. And you can look at the world upside down. And then look, I tell them like, hey, look at that world right now, upside down. Remember it. And tomorrow, your, ex your assignment, you're going to draw anything that resonates with you with this experience. Because I'm just curious of what they remember, you know, kids, when they draw something, when they write something. I don't mind if you sing, you draw it, or you you write it in a word, but I want you to remember this moment, and tomorrow the assignment is to make an art out of it, artwork. They, we also did, like, gardening, like, putting decoration in the house, the abandoned house, but they're so, uh, you know, and I thought I was the teacher, they become my teacher. Because they have so much creativity. They have so much that they did that I didn't know that a person could do at a young age. And they planted the, the hanging plant, just cut off some, some bottles and turn it into a pot. And then hanging it everywhere. And we were so happy. Like, and I'm one of the most beautiful memories of my life that until now, if I'm going to go back, it will make me feel that, hey, that's the best thing I've ever done in my life. And I will never, ever, ever forget it. I will always keep to that story. And then after that, um, I left, of course. I had to take a break. I went to the city to just shower, you know, to clean myself because I have forgotten myself. And then, so I just kind of wanted to... So, yeah. Um, there's a calling that uh, brought me back to the city just to take space, you know, like because every day I was with kids and I start to become a mom of 15 kids, 11 to 15, because sometimes they're bring friends, sometimes they don't. But the whole uh, it's always 11 to 12. And they I was working also in a hostel and exchange so I can start, you know, eating and like using the space for the kids to to use to watch movie because they have projector and I wanted to involve them with the people coming in to the new island, you know, people come. I want them to ex explore it and experience the spaces too that people bring here. I don't want them to just be there and be nothing and people just kick them out and like, hey, don't go here, like, you know, I don't like this. So I, they're my students and I'm here and they're gonna enter here, you know, this is their space. And we let them in because these are the purest people that can come to your place. So the, I, I did that. I was just, uh, you know, make, taking care of the plants and everything and that. And then I wanted to bring more art materials. So I went to the city to get back and take care of myself again. And when I, my friends saw how I become so skinny, like from being light skin, taken care of by all the the clinic, you know, we would always have these free freebies as models or like, you know, there's always people because they also give you sponsorship of your skin, of your teeth, of everything that you can take care of yourself. And I lost all of that privilege and exchange, of course, of that. And I came back to Manila and I look like, you know, like homeless. And then what happened to you? All my friends said, and they didn't even care about all the memories I did there. All they cared about what I like, look. I'm like, I cried. I cried because, like, wow. Like, I see the, the contrast here. Like, well, they didn't ask me how was it. I just need to rest. But I love it. I love that my soul is full for the first time in my life. My soul is fed well. well. And then um, that was the time when it was, I met the father of my son. <laughs> like we were both working in a community relations. And then I was a walking tour guide. I thought that before the people coming in the islands, it's more powerful to be in the intersection where everyone else arrives. 
before they go to the islands. So I can show this perspective. I wrote everything down, all the things that I saw on the island with the experience. Because I wanted to write a book, right? I let the world surprise me all the time. And then I went to the city and I wanted to s give them a briefing to protect these children, you know, to protect the people that I got attached to, to know them, to care about their space too. So we don't completely erase these souls. They're important. They're more super important in a place. It attracts this beauty. They're the soul. Every island has a soul. But particularly this place I lived, on all the other islands, I'm sure that there's many of them out there. And I wanted to go to the city in Manila first to speak about all of this experience, to share it before coming to the islands. So I became a walking tour guide for free. Free walking tour. All the people join me, take a walk, visit the spaces where I would go, um, and share every experience I had so that before they go, they already can be mindful about coming with the intention of being with people and exploring it more than just, uh, you know, um, taking space. We will also understand the new sp the space is also with inhabitants, with people who's there and it's their only home. And if it's gone, unlike us or other people can travel and go to another place, but with them, that's their only home. They cannot travel. We don't. They don't have the means. Their memories were there. They were raised there. I don't want that to be gone. So I cared. I got attached to them. Like they're my kids. I was not a mom then. Then I met the father of my son, and then COVID. Oh my God! I got pregnant. I just met him, and then it was the same day when the president said, "You have to pack up your things. We're gonna stay in one place for thirty days until ninety days, and until forever." Like, and then the first day that that friday the 13th that was when i found out i'm pregnant the same day that you need to stay in a place we're gonna stay forever so for me i didn't care about covid i was more ex for the first time i felt scared i felt afraid i'm gonna have a child inside of my body and i don't know if i am capable of this you know commitment and all the things that will change because i'm still wanting to go back there and be a teacher like the things i dreamed of but then um, for 90 days, you know, when you're pregnant, you wish that your experience will be better, you know, because somebody can take care of you, you can take a walk, you can run, you can watch out for your mental health, you can eat good food. But there's only one time in a week where you can walk to 7-Eleven. I got stuck in the city while I'm pregnant and with the father of my kid. And we stayed together. And yeah, it's <laughs> better stayed together and then we just kind of embrace it and my soul man like slowly losing it like but after 90 days you know the window for the i'm so spoiled with the sunset where i'm from where i came from and the only sun i could see is the glass from the other building that illuminates the sunset or the color of the sign that I can see from where I was staying for 90 days as pregnant. And I've been trying to write a lot of my darkness, the pain I was feeling as a pregnant person. And, and I'm an alien in this world, you know, because your body is changing a lot, mental health, spirituality, all that. And then 90 days, the bus from the... There's magical occurrences happening here. There's a bus that sent to pick us up from where I live, from the village. It was meant for the people who are stuck everywhere in, in the city. But it was like I was the first on the list to pick up because of my aunt knew that I'm pregnant and they wanted me home to help me. I didn't want to go home yet until I'm successful. I didn't want to go home until I'm old. I wanted to come home and just settle in. And you know, when everything's done, you will come home and have all these stories. But I came home pregnant. I was not ready to be seen like that in the most vulnerable and kind of like for me it's not success it's me needing my people and not you know like so anyway i went home and then my son was born on 11 11 2020 and i saw i saw that 11 11 is like the number of pure love and 2020 is the great awakening that's what my child represent so my darling agos I took my, my child with me to, after one month of giving birth, 
when there's also a flood happening and it's like a lot of things happening you know like damn <laughs> and then i went to the island because i wanted to live away from my family i'm too vulnerable around them and then i wanted to be in, a, in another place and then suddenly there's a calling for shargao i could imagine myself if i'm free to see to travel the world in my head and i'm gonna travel somewhere where would i want to be that i will feel like i am myself and i can be myself i don't know shargao but it appeared in my head and then I arrive with my son, just me and my son, because I separated with my partner because we were both so broken and we needed some space. So he went to learn baking, to be a baker. And then that was also the chance that I said, I'm not going where you are. I'm not going to depend on you. You cannot. I, I need to go on my own because I feel like this is where I have, some, I have a com uh, opportunity. I don't just want to wait at home, pregnant. And while you're baking and and see you suffer and have the two of us in you know you're still also trying to heal because of all the things and you became a father and we stayed in my province and you don't know anyone and all you had was me and i'm like a monster you know because i'm pregnant and i just out of kindness out of love it's not that i don't want to be with him i just want him to breathe so go then i left and i went also to shargao on my own with my kid, uh, carrying all the things that we could carry. And along the way, I didn't have to carry anything. All I had to carry was my kid because people showed up from the cab, carrying it to put it in the trunks, arriving in the airport, seeing me as a mom, putting all of them in the port, the port, the port guy, port man, and then bringing it all the way to the check-in. And we didn't have to fall in line with the bus, the plane was, going to leave and the kids has to go in front of the line first so we cut off the line i didn't have papers i only have this you know red cross thing where they can approve but they said there's something we need to change with your papers and i talked to her as a human being like look i cannot go back this is a one-way thing i need to ride that plane this is all i have i just want to take refuge and be with my kid to start somewhere new and can breathe would you let me just take the plane because I traveled so long just to get here. Don't send me home because I don't have enough papers. Look at me. I'm a, I'm a mom. I have a kid. I said. Then he said, you go, okay, can you take this woman and drop her all the way to the plane? And then we, it, the plane was about to leave. <laughs> so we arrive in the plane inside there and we sat. And I'm just like feeling a little bit like nervous because I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't have money. I only have 30,000 pesos to begin with. I don't know, but I know if you have courage, you everything will fall into place with my kid. And when we arrive at the port, because I took the plane to the port, not exactly here because it's so expensive, um, the the immigration, like the guys working in the airport are carrying my kid because he's so cute. And then they said, you want to eat first? Go eat first. Like we take care of him. And while I'm eating, they're carrying him next to me. They left the, their work. And one of them was, it's like there's many things, magical things that are happening because I'm eating and then they're carrying him because I, it's a baby, six months old. I'm like, I'm tired. I just flew. I flew and I have so many things with me, and I'm still not there. And then as soon as we arrive with the boat, and as soon as we arrive on the island, I felt relief. Wow. Good job, girl. You're here. You made it. I look at my son. Remember this day. This is the day that our life will turn around. And then my products, I wanted to, I didn't know it was waiting for me. I was just offering love to this island. I was offering work. I don't care if I will make anything. I just want to be part of this community. I want to be like everyone so I can learn their instincts, so I can live like them. Because if they are able to live here, these human beings, I can too. <laughs> What's so special about them that, that I don't have? 
So I want to learn how to, you know, like sustain myself with their lifestyle, the really real lifestyle, okay? Like I want to know their instinct so I can live here. Because I don't have anything. And then I for the first time in my life, I worked as a storekeeper at Goodies. And because it's crafty, I wanted to separate myself from motherhood, so I applied for the job. And I had to leave my son to Vedia. It's next to the place where we're staying. And I said, do you need extra job? I'm gonna pay you 100 per hour. But I don't have much, you know. Just needed the space to get the job. So I had to leave him for an interview. And then, um, when I... When, I had two, three interviews in two days. Like one day was another place, but they only saw me as a woman. They thought I'm not a mom and I have these boobs. Of course, I'm breastfeeding. I felt like you're just seeing me as a, you know, like a woman. You don't know my story. I don't think you will hire me until when you know that I'm a mom. That energy. A lot of people show their intentions, you know, when they see me that way. And I know it's not. It's not. I will. I'm. I'm ready for the battle, you know. And then, so I left um, Antutu Vedia, and I told them I have an interview. And then after the interview, I got drunk for the first time. Like I just want to lose myself, you know. And then I was with my friend who also got pregnant in COVID, and they had a business here, and they're more rich, you know. My friends are all rich. I'm the only one who's not. And there we're dancing like the old times, doing the same things we did, but crying too, you know, like just reuniting here, didn't know that they also are here. And then, so after that, when I came back a little drunk, like I saw my kid at Vedia and he's surrounded with pillows, with humidifier and nice lighting, like... I don't know, they turned him into a toy. <laughs> like, the first time they have a baby, of course. They were all watching him like that, and I felt so good. Like, wow, amazing. Like, I can trust these people. <laughs> and then, because it's vegan, so I trusted them. I like the energy that they just don't work for me. They treat him like a person. They're all artists. There's a dishwasher who plays guitar at night and stays free for them. There's an artist who a barista but then she's a painter too so all the people working there are more than just what their works but they are something else but their dreams and during the time covid you have to figure out a way to sustain so anything could work you know as long as they provide you something you don't have to worry about and when i was paying the girl that looked like normal human being <laughs> normal because normally I expect the rich person would look rich right but here they look like the most homeless people, you know? So don't underestimate these people. You don't know how much they have in their life. And then I was paying Chin. And then I was giving her 500 for five hours. And then she said, like, no, just keep it for yourself. I, she said, and I cried. It's like, oh, there's humanity. <laughs> and I didn't know that she's the owner of the place. And I'm like, oh my God, you look homeless. <laughs> But until now, we make that joke, you know, because sometimes they ask her for a towel and everything. Like, hey, can you get us a towel? Like, the people from other places, like, really seeing her and she's playing with that role and she's enjoying that perspective, I think. So I paid her and then that day I gave my sign to another person. But to cut the story short, they became our family from that moment when they told me, don't give my kid to other people anymore. If I need to work, just leave him to leave him to them. So it allowed me to have space to, to work. And they bring him when I have to breastfeed him and I would go to the toilet and just feeding him, you know, and then give him again. And I, I had to be strong with why well, I had no choice, you know. So I crafted, I started the instinct of crafting because they have everything available around the store. And I was just crafting and writing and reading as I was a storekeeper. I also helped them uh, create some soul in the brand because, of course, I have a lot of perspective, you know, and I can show them how they can be more, um, you know, ethical and do things that they already have and navigate it in a more soulful way, you know. So that was my offering in exchange for receiving me in their space and to get into crafting. 
And then I the COVID uh, the typhoon. So the typhoon kicked us out again. And then I started making cool down. So this is the first product. This was cool down. Like it was after Serp Skin Remedy. Because if you're working in a in a in a store <laughs> It's not there, 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 there. Again, again, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool down. It was two hundred fifty, uh, two hundred fifty ml before the original was j a buck, uh, a jar. But then typhoon, I gave it all away because the first batch I didn't make enough. What is that? It's a uh, after surf. You know, you're burnt. You. Mm. You also want aloe to, vera. yeah, aloe vera, good for sunburn. Uh, your skin is dry and it's also a reminder to don't go right away and go fast and shower yourself. Cool down means slow down. Take your time. Reflect first how it felt when you went to surf, how it affected you while taking care of your body. And it has a kind of like an experience because it was just a regular thing and I have an instinct that if you put all these uh, things together, they're good for your skin. But also because I'm very feelings person, I and I've used so many products as a model, I know what I like. And I just put the favorite um, ingredients that I knew was fit together. And I know how to cook. So I kind of instinctively incorporated the way we forage food at home and the things I learned outside home that I also use every time for my skin. So I know aloe vera is good for your skin. I know that... Uh, peppermint will give you an experience when it's so hot that leaves you feeling like, mm, you know, like cold. Uh, you know, the after of a uh, peppermint, it's kind of chill on your skin. It makes you breathe from the sun. And then tea tree because it's good for like wounds. That's what how you treat alternatively instead of betadine on your wound. And I also know um, patchouli, it was... A smell that I got attracted to, but I didn't know it's it's healing benefits spiritually and all these things. All the th the journey was with no expectations. It was all a test. It was an experiment, and I was giving it for free because I want to know how they feel, just to know if it's working. And then I didn't make enough. I was just spending money, and I was like not so interested anymore and I gave, when the typhoon arrived I don't have anything to give because we're gonna leave the island because I have a kid you know typhoon was crazy I'm not gonna go deep into that but I gave it all away and then it survived one jar and then we started continuing our life back here in Shargao and then Chin said because she gave it like a, a communal gel for everyone in the hostel in Bedia so everyone can use it after surf and one French girl who had a problem with her skin, uh, it was something like genetic. That she would get, it gets worse depending on the weather. But when she started using it normally, she would get rashes. But when she used it, that's the first time that the rashes subsided. But it's still her, in her genes, but it helped her, supported her to not have the, the side effects. I mean, the things that comes out when it's all hot. So she, she said, where did you get that? She said, like, ah, oh, that's the mother of the kid here, Antu. But she's not making it anymore. And it's like, can you ask her to make new batch? I'll bring it to France. Like, And Chin told me that. And I had said, mm, okay, I'll make it again. And then I get back to crafting because of that one person who appreciated it and gave me this feedback. And I started making things more, like, jungle that's my own oil because i got into an accident i lost my toe here a crazy experience about you know dating the guys here in chargao it's another topic that they are very playful and you know, i didn't know i was to just suck into the feelings because i felt nothing for a long time you know just working and being a mom and suddenly a guy likes you no some people you know like <laughs> Yeah, people coming here, you know, didn't know that they're so used to dating and having a lot of girls. And I thought, you know, it's serious or something specially for me. But 
I was just pro, you know, going with it and I got jealous and I was drinking a lot and I was riding a bike and then boom, like lose your toe in one second and then my kid has to stay in bed. Yeah, I got retreated in the hospital for 10 days. It's like stop working, stop doing anything. The universe said stop. Just retreat yourself and take care of yourself. So in exchange, my toe. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's like the best time ever happened to me because now I don't have to do anything. Everyone just taking care of me. And then I get out of the hospital in my bed, be able to rest and feel shine because I I am allowed to not do anything. I'm sick. How long was it? 2021. And the 2021 of June. Yeah, and the hospitals here, they had a problem back then. Like, they don't know what to do with me because they're not into the bones. And it's it's already, you know, they cut it because the bone was exposed and it's cut off. And then it was no sail day, so there was no boat to drop me. I have to take this fast boat that's so expensive, like 20. Because they're my friend, they gave me discount and uh, so many things. And then that's when I started developing the jungle. The jungle oil was only originally 15 pieces. That's all I could afford. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> everything has a story. It comes out as an instinct, like a medicine for everything that happened to me. So jungle oil is hair, face, and body oil, but it's a grounding oil. Yeah, it's weighed with patchouli, my trademark. Patchouli is a grounding uh it's something like with Sampagita, you know, because it's a memory from childhood. I want to remember that. It's our national flower too. And Ilang Ilang. Because these flowers, they're not just beautiful. They are also an experience. And you will have this nostalgia when you smell something, it goes directly in your head. And you remember memories. Because when you're young, right, you have a favorite scent. Somebody brings that scent to you and you're like, ding. Wait, I'm back there. What's that? What's the smell? You know? And I have that when I smell these flowers I put there. I want to remember home. I want to, to know that even though wherever I am in the world, I represent me, where I'm from, from the north, with all the flowers, with all the trees. And patchouli, I know maybe it's not from the Philippines or whatever, but my instinct make me feel comfortable with the smell that this is what you should use. Like there's a, an instinct or energy to me telling me, which to use and apparently in the future i will able to know why i don't know it yet in the beginning it just comes the, the it comes to you later the effect of it came from people the way they give me feedback is not from me i just created it i'm just the one who got inspired but it's always belong to everybody the instinct is just something i learned from my my people but it was always meant to be shared it was not only for me so the experience that people got from my products, it's me growing with them because they told me or I watched their lives change. Not because of my oil, but maybe something with the oil, you know, when you put something made of love or I make sure that it's with that way, like that I will do it right, that I won't go shortcut. I won't, I will forage my future. I will put every block of my house made from that. I want my life to be sustained by Mother Earth. I want to prove to people that it's possible to create anything, anything you could dream from whatever instinct that you have without validating it to the world, but only for the feelings you had when you were using them. But at least when you're using organic materials, you don't hurt anybody. You don't hurt yourself. You don't hurt nature. Instead, you bring this love like the tool and you're the one who had the intention. So it creates the soul with you working with the one that raised me. Um, I just want to uh, read one thing about my product. This is something like a Bible to me. Very, very short. But look, I was going to make an edible plants, um, wild plants. Um, this is the inspiration of my product. Everything that I shared you is just because I want you to know my soul. But this time, I want you to know the product that I made out of that experience. The real deal. <laughs> I've been holding spaces too, like sharing wisdom of the plants because I feel called to do those things, not that I'm gonna do it forever, every day, or it's just timing. 
But I write everything down so I don't forget. Because we have we have this this forgetful memory when everything's good we forget everything that we have learned. When we don't write it, we forget it because it's too good. Memories are too good. We don't remember the lessons we learned from the hard parts. But I write it so I don't forget it. I'm grounded by that. So I am your body. I am love. I am expression. I'm the womb of creation. My darling Agos represents wild grace. She is beauty, inner child, and great love. Three important pillars to navigate her way through life. To show gratitude to, the, to life by giving love to her body. Her most loyal companion. A brave and humble heart contains the greatest treasures. Born under the northern skies, raised by the trees, guided by the sky, sunset silhouettes and dreamy golden hours. She connects to herself by the whispers of her heart, by the gift of touch to protect its right to breathe soulfully with gentle love. Let the energy of pure love and interconnected interconnectedness guide me. Amen. Why do I, what do I stand for? Beauty, first of all. When you care about yourself, beauty doesn't mean on the outside of your skin. Beauty is coming from deeper, from your core. And if you embrace who you are, your wholeness, you will also give an access to the other people to breathe like that. So beauty is something like inside to outside, but inspiration from the outside to the inside. Beauty because you, when you take care of yourself, you're grateful to be alive that you honor your body. An inner child is because some people, you know, forget to be child, childish, like to forget that purity and innocence of being a child, pure creation, pure bliss, pure innocence, choosing good even if you know everything. That's the energy of inner child. Sometime when we were young, we felt like we were forced to grow up fast, like me. But of course, with still a lot of pure memories. But some point in our life, we left the child somewhere, somewhere maybe in the dark closet where it was not allowed to go out. But, you know, the great love, like how I will see earth as grandma and the sky as grandpa. The love of grandparents are great. My grandma would embrace you, make you feel like you're on your own, but because she wants to see your strength and weakness first before she can tend to you, to tend to me. So that's the love of earth. She will make you feel alone or she will give you comfort when it's time. I have pictures of everything I told you. What made you decide to share this story with me, with the world right now? I'm just a human being. I have a story to share. And if it's gonna make people feel hopeful or inspired, why can't we share it? The world's chaotic. It's normal. There will always be chaos. But I want to share this kind of chaos, you know, like that makes you feel good having it. The chaos you chose for yourself, but also good for other people. So I didn't really have any intention. I just want people to know my story and let them hold it or let it go. But I have no attachment. I just wanted to release that story. And I think it feels good inside. If you like it or not, it's okay. I shared it. In exchange, I just want you to feel in solidarity with me. I don't care. If you're whoever, whatever, or you are in this world, what I care if I am connecting with you, you, your heart, your humanity, are you there? Are you there? <laughs> That's it. I just want to talk to human beings. 
I've been traveling and exploring the world for many years, talking to so many people. I got to say that uh, your story is one of the most powerful stories I've heard. And um, I want to tell you that uh, you're a beautiful person from the inside and the outside. And this story has to be told. And I really hope it will reach uh, as much as people that we we can reach. And um, I also want to say uh, thank you so much for sharing this story. Thank you so much for being who you are. And thank you so much for your time and this pleasant comfortable space that you provide for this present, for this moment. And thank you, Shiri Gao, for being such a magical place that can bring such as magical stories like that. I knew it. I knew that's going to be magical. I mean, having this moment with you, thank you for being patient to wait. I know everything happens in you know, divine timing. And when the world's opening up and, you know, like things happening before we start. But also to add to the question of why did I share it? I think mostly to see that there's always these beautiful human beings appears in our lives. When we're so busy worrying about our lives, ourselves, they're always coming. Imagine how many people was there in the story. Not me, I'm just the observer and the initiated person to, exp to walk in that path. But I think we, if you read my or you hear my story, I want you to remember the moments when there are people appeared in my life that made me believe that love is not lost, it's just forgotten. I mean, we do love. But sometimes our illusions, I mean, our fears are taking over, but love is everywhere all the time. I felt it so many times. I just want to give, give what I'm receiving, you know. It's from everybody. I'm here. I'm going to channel all the love I receive and give it away for those who need it. In a way, with words, with stories, with oils, with company, with space. <laughs> With laughter, laughter, with drinking alcohol, whatever, I'm here. I just want to say that, that I'm not the star of my story. I'm just the one gluing everything together. But it's the people. It's the people for real. I want them to be remembered upon sharing that story there along the way, you know. I just want to clarify it, that it's the point. A testimony.